All right, guys, this is Steven uh, from Team Covenant, and I am joined by none other than Zach Bunn. That is me. Also from TC. What a surprise. And uh, Zach, you're here on the left, so you're going to be able to give actually a very, uh, very interesting commentary. You'll actually be able to kind of give some of your thoughts as we go. My first question is, why do you have your iPhone on your deck? Is that for a particular reason? You're trying to text uh, the, the deck there? Uh, this this is for a particular reason. Um, for those that don't know, this is the first round of the Top 8 event we're having at the Covenant Store. And we basically have eight weeks in a row where the winner qualifies for this Top 8 event. And this is the first round. Um, I have my phone out because I'm getting ready to hand it to Jonathan to take a picture of the Top 8 so that I can post it to Facebook. Uh, but hey, in the meantime, hey. I'm considering my hand and whether I should mulligan or not. Absolutely. So let's let's talk about the matchup here, right? So Ben is our resident uh, awesome Martel Maester deck player. Um, it's exceptionally good to have Ben around, even though sometimes we hate his deck so much because this is the kind of testing that everyone needs. Everyone needs to be ready for Martel Maesters. It is... I. I almost want to say, without a doubt, the strongest archetype that there is just across the board as far as what it's capable of and you know what you're typically going to be able to defeat with that archetype. It doesn't really have a whole lot of weaknesses. We haven't seen anything that really can just tear it apart. Um, but this is a Martel Maester build versus uh, your deck, which is a Targ Shadows Burn, maybe? Yeah, I mean, it's very strong burn. Uh, but I've, I've started referring to it as a Shadows deck at this point. Okay. And so, going into this matchup now, this has not been a favorable matchup for you in the past. We play this matchup all the time. Um, ben is here quite often. Uh, what, are you, what are you looking for uh, in this matchup to really, make it, to really make it swing into your favor where it otherwise might not? So, before the, the last, um, actually the last two FAQs updated, Ben and I played a lot. Uh, we played a, every week. We somehow got paired against each other. We practiced on the weekends. And I, with my burn deck, have not ever beaten um, Martel Maesters. So since then, though, cards like um, Narrow Escape have been restricted and the Maesters Path as well. So he can't run both of those cards. And before, I mean, the one thing that makes Martel Maesters so gross is the fact that they have the Refugees of Maester, zero cost. They have a whole lot of two-cost maesters that are really good, like the Maester of War. Um, and then that makes things like the Conclave, which is the five-cost neutral maester, five strength, actually cost less because it's minus one for each maester. So Martel in particular is really good when you're using maesters. Um, and one thing that Burn struggles with is any deck that just gets out a lot of characters and doesn't care which ones die. So most maesters are neutral, or not neutral, they're, they're not unique, and he can get a lot of them out. You'll see, um, even in this game, Ben will play a lot of maesters every turn, and that's really hard for Ben to keep up with, or for me to keep up with, with Burn. So, um, anyways, with things like Narrow Escape, right? Like, I can Valor, or I can Burn. Like, if you look, he's got three characters starting the board before we even so start. So he starts out with Informed Acolyte, Maester of the Sun, Orphan of Green Blood. Now... It's amazing that Ben manages to drop probably my three most hated uh, Martel Maester characters here. You have Informed Acolyte providing the much-needed uh, Outwit Learned Crest there. Three strength for three. Classic uh, Intrigue power that's probably going to get a military icon from Maester of War here any moment. I'm sure of it. Um, and he can kneel to uh, basically copy a draw effect. So that's, that's not a bad deal at all. You have Maester of Sun. That Vengeful is crazy. And then Summer and Winter, he does some fun things as well. And then uh, number one on the list, Orphan of Green Blood. Man, of all the things that I can say, <laughs> that card is unreal. You just basically make a character useless for a turn with that Orphan zero cost. And uh, <laughs> what more do you need to say? Take out their best character for a turn. Allows you to get unopposed challenges. Allows you to get chains onto those maesters. Um, it's just pretty, pretty crazy. So you're hollow hilling here. And uh, you're staring down a board that's already like pretty well set up. Uh, I don't know what what's your strategy going into this match. I mean, you you've got to burn, right? But there's got to be more to it than that with the Maesters. Yeah, I mean, I think what really you know it, going into this game, I wanted to do something different because I knew that doing what I had been doing wasn't working. Right. Um, Definition and, of insanity. Yeah, and knowing that he doesn't have narrow escapes because he's running Maesters path, he can't have it. Um, means that he's going to be a lot more susceptible to valor to just pure control. But what I noticed when I play Ben a lot and really any Maester is 
it's all momentum for them. So if on turn one you give them two or three unopposed challenges, because they have a ton of characters, um, they're going to get two or three chains. And once they get the two or three chains, they become really hard to stop. One chain gives plus strength, one gives traits, one lets you draw cards. Once the card engine starts, they just draw even more cheap characters, and it's just kind of a, tra a train you can't stop. So I'm looking to control here. So you open by ambushing Dragonite preplot, or yep. Dragon Thief preplot. Which does nothing except for get one card out of my hand. I can't imagine why you'd want to do that. Uh, so <laughs> looks like uh, what you're planning here is to drop a rule by decree. This is often seen. You can do it with Mirish Villas out of Targ as well. Anything that you can ambush out of your hand, Forever Burning, I've seen you do that as well. Um, basically to get your hand size down to six so that your opponent then has, fewer, uh, has more cards in their hand so you can drop Rule by Decree, make them discard three cards. Um, so card advantage is going to be a big deal for you here. You're trying to slow down the momentum with this play, right? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, on turn two or three, I want him to be drawing the top of his deck. So I'm trying to get him down to four cards here. He'll draw two, probably play two, or two three, or even four, and then I want to make sure he's not getting the chains that let him draw. Hmm, that seems like a... Uh, it's going to be a hard process. I'm interested in how you're doing it. So he's going to seduce you here. Which is not that bad on a four goal, four initiative plot. Here's, and here's the thing to, to look for with these maester decks. Typically they do open with Art of Seduction. I've noticed that. Pretty strong opening. Just because they absolutely know what's happening next. There's no more variables at that point for them. They open with Art of Seduction, and then... They generally will go into To the Spears or maybe a more controlly plot. They can even drop Valor safely without having to worry about Outwit or anything like that. And then, uh, you know, they have basically the game kind of the first two turns are locked down in their favor. They can do whatever they want, see the board, and see what they want to do. So you're seduced here. It's a four gold plot. Four initiative is not a bad deal altogether, but you're not going to get that effect. Uh, Definitely. I mean, I have some very powerful plots. So having a turn where I can't get a win revealed or some kind of benefit. Um, it is it is a bummer, but fortunately I, I at least will get six gold over the next two turns. Absolutely. What do you make of that first turn artist seduction uh, as far as the play? Now, what are you doing here? What is this? Uh... That's his discard pile. Okay. I'm seeing what he discarded, um, which I, I remember one was, an, an, orphan. One was nice. an orphan and one was a zero cost location um, that was just economy. So already, um, you know, getting those cards out of his hands, those are two zero costs that he would just play straight out turn one. And just you know, get the steam rolling, as it were, for the maesters. All right. So this is reasonable then. This is something that you're not terrified of. Um, now, what do what do you do? You remember what you're looking at here in your hand? What you're really considering? You've got six gold coming in. Uh, you're staring down already a pretty decent field. Uh, wh what is it that you're going to try to do here to maintain or to recover really from the lack of setup? I remember pretty distinct, distinctly. Um, I had the, um, the the location is three influence. The uh, the red keep. The red keep. Um, I had the Red Keep in my hand, and I also had a Hatchling's Feast, which I usually try to save... Ha against most people, I save Hatchling's Feast for my threat from the north turn. But I'm looking, I'm not going to get a threat from the north for two more turns. It'll be turn three before I can even think about it. Right. So a tough decision I, I make, I'm pretty sure. We'll see what happens. I'm pretty sure I drop down a card in Shadows, um, and then I save one gold to, to put it out so that I can actually um, Hatchling's Feast him. Now, the Hatchling's Feast is so huge because... One, it lets me actually be able to burn him um, pretty easily with, you know, like a single incinerate for one strength can kill at that point. But more importantly, and again, this is what I'm doing different against the maesters, I'm not even necessarily looking to kill on this turn. What I'm looking to do is make sure he doesn't get chains. He's probably, again, he's going to play a handful of cards, and he's going to be down to very few cards after this. I don't want him getting the chain that's going to let him draw two this turn, and next turn, and potentially more than two. Um, so I make the decision early on to commit to playing the influence out and making sure that I can shut down his challenges um, and we'll see what happens, but I'm pretty sure that's what I do here. So this is this is coming from a bit of experience against Maesters, and this is a, maybe, for everyone listening, a potentially way to approach this matchup. Um, I've often heard people who play Maester decks, Ben has told me before, I've often, in more or less exasperation, nice Illyrio drop there, um, with a dupe, yeah, hello. That's pretty good. And then yeah. I do the two for shadows and one for uh, flipping it up. Awesome. Now, so, I'm considering here, though, I have that and I have a Sorrowful Man. So if he drops a Conclave, I considered putting the Sorrowful Man in, but then I remembered I don't have the influence because I spent it to do the pre-plot action. Right, right, right. Trade-off for uh, for the roll by decree. Look at that economy. Ben just busts it out. I think another one comes, actually. Isn't that the worst thing to see? 
you know, just like your opponent just having already plus two gold. So he's matching your hollow hill, and he's going to get minus two on top of that for a reducer. There's a conclave. There's that cheap conclave. Right there. One gold. It's ludicrous. <clears throat> and you look, four of those maesters are Martel. Orphan of Greenblood and Maester? Uh, I'm not I sure. I think he is. I don't think so. But yeah, anyway, so he plays two, I'm sorry, he pays two gold for that uh, conclave. A yep. pretty decent value, considering he has a crest. He can get any keyword that he wants, pretty much. Uh, stealth, deadly, uh, renown. And he's a five strength. So already, you know, you're looking at this, and you've got to be thinking... But you know the conclave is the last thing I wanted to see. If I'm going to Hatchlings Feast to hopefully make it where you can't challenge me, it's a three, a two, and a one strength, conclave is just awful. Right. So, but I'm looking at it. Conclave has intrigue and power, right? Um, which Illyrio also has intrigue and power. And if I give the Conclave minus three, he can't beat Illyrio. Um, and I have never played a Ben's Maester deck where he gave extra strength somehow. Right. Um, That's not typically what they do. What you've got to look out for, though, right, is he calls it thinking. This is the the Grand Martel Trump card, and you just got to wonder if Ben has this in his hand or not. Doesn't doesn't that say without an influence cost? It does say without an influence cost, yeah. Yeah, so if he had a Hand of Judgment here, um, which I think he does actually run one or two copies of, and he has the gold to do it. Um, scary. It is indeed scary. So the question is here now, if you're looking to prevent him from getting chains, are you going to attack at all, or are you just waiting to, uh, to absorb his challenges? Um, well, he has the Orphan, so he can blank someone. So he does, he blanks my knight or my uh, thief Dragon because thief. it has the military icon right, right so right. what's funny though is that if he had blanked Illyrio of his icons he could have absolutely at least gotten the draw chain off because I wouldn't have a power icon to stop him absolutely yeah there you go that's uh what if it, yeah thank goodness he didn't see the maester of war but the good thing is you can't have all of the cards that you need all at once so that is the good thing yeah trade a conclave for a maester of war I don't know if I do that trade um, so anyway, getting back to kind of the general strategy here as you're considering the board uh, and making your moves, you're, you're really just trying... This isn't a standard game. It isn't a standard game that we're playing here. This is you trying to shut him off before he can get started. Absolutely. And uh, I'm interested to see how this works out. And maybe if this can transition into other decks uh, and how they might handle the Martell Maesters. Because I imagine that we're going to not see an end to this deck archetype anytime soon. It just seems to have all the tools, right? It does, yeah. I mean, especially for Burn, as an example, a lot of my stuff says choose a character without an attachment. Right. And most of his characters will have attachments. Now, I'm, I'm not sure here, but I think I'm making an intrigue challenge. Seems right. Um, and I'm pretty sure he blocks with a conclave. Thinking he can claim renown, block, and then get the three un- or the two unopposed challenges with his other characters, because I'll be knelt down without icons. Right. I wonder, yeah... Seems like Ben might want to overcommit here, given that uh, he doesn't really have anything to lose as long as he has two characters up. And one thing to remember is, you know, if he wins a challenge as the defender, he also gets a chain. Right. So this is a really, really tempting opportunity for him to get three chains off on the first turn. Right, and he can immediately grab the uh, grant a uh, military icon and plus two strength. Absolutely. And give it up. Give it up. So uh, ultimately, he's sitting. Um, I think, on two cards in hand. So I entry with one claim, um, getting ready to get rid of half his hand if he doesn't block. And so it's pretty lucrative to, to potentially block, win the challenge, grab the one that grants military, and then get three more challenges off. Yeah, that's pretty nasty. I mean, what do you, what do, you do about that? So there he goes. There he goes with the conclave. It's been defense of the conclave, and let's see what... Uh, what uh, you have in store here. Uh, we know you have Hatchlings Feast since we're listening to this commentary. Um, and I believe you said you do play it, right? Or you're at least considering it. I'm p- you gotta drop pretty the confident there. that I play it, yeah. You gotta give him my Now, I'm two. still deciding because it's tough, right? If we do get to turn three, I can, without having to Valor, he's out of a hand. I'm gonna get six gold next turn. Um, once we get to turn three, I could threat from the north and take care of some characters. Take serious care. Of some um, but he could also intrigue, pull it out of my hand, and then all of that is for naught, and I'm sitting on three influence for no reason. Right, right, right. That's a weird. That's a weird consideration. And uh, does Ben? Do you happen to know if Ben runs Forgotten Plans? There he goes. So three influence, dropping Hatchlings Feast. 
Uh, minus three, minus two, minus one? Yeah, because I can give the three strength character minus three to zero, the conclave dropping down to three, so I still win the challenge. And then uh, minus one strength to the other character, which I don't believe gets to zero. Um, and I still get the card, which is what's crazy about this exchange. Boom, he calls it thinking. That's what you want to see right there. So I drop a card, I win the challenge, and because I win, now I get to bring in Illyrio, triggering, or Cal triggering Illyrio to kill that one guy I dropped down yeah, to one. Yeah, that's what you want right there. And I'm still going to get the military challenge. And of course, he's not going to claim the Conclave. Um, so he's down to one character with zero strength after this. That is a huge turn there. Now, how many cows are you running that deck? Two. Two. It's yeah, a, he's it, that critical. It, it's even without Illyrio. Like, it's nice with Illyrio because I get the kill effect, right? And, but even without him, anytime I can surprise challenge, I'm telling, reminding him he has zero strength. Right. Um, dropping that that cow Drogo in is super critical. This. So this has turned out. Th this is the play of the game. Like this is the, this is the moment uh, where one. Yeah. <laughs> How do you recover from this as Ben with the Maesters, right? He's got one card in hand. He's got no chains. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to get this, the Valyrian Steel Link at this point. The momentum has stopped. And this is just kind of a... Uh, this I've never seen a Maester deck kind of just stopped in its tracks like this. Yeah, that I've certainly the, have never been able to do it myself. The ultimate turn was right there. Um, that was the... Because right there, uh, what you see, again, no chains off. He's down to one card. He's, I think it's the only game that matters. Uh, game of Thrones, yeah. Doesn't yeah. kneel for yeah. intrigue. Um, but I'm still getting six gold. I've got Illyrio. I've got another character out. He knows I've got Cal Drogo at this point. I've got five influence. So most of the cards in my, my deck I can play influence. Um, and it's it's definitely one of the better starts I've ever had against him. Control on the board. I wonder if he uh, if he went with Game of Thrones to try to win initiative here, not not uh, remembering the Hollow Hill because I know I do that all the time. I'll forget about that Hollow Hill bonus. Um, that's that's kind of what I'm thinking. So going through my head, but then again, not kneeling for entry is not a bad deal either. Trying to get some chains, got to get some chains right here. And again, the not letting him get the chains right there is so big. Um, oh, it's unreal because now he, again he has three cards instead of five. And he has a lot of economy. He has four... How many, how many gold is Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones is three, I believe. So, I mean, he has seven gold worth of stuff he can play down if he had the cards to play them. Yeah, but he's sitting on three cards, right? Yeah, instead of five. Nice. Nice. So then what... You know, we've kind of seen this happen. You put a card in the shadows here. Um, would you say that uh, this is a lucky start for you, or that you just kind of are learning more how to handle the Macers? Do you, does Targ Burn have a chance here? Um, ben kind of getting owned by economy here. That's the that's the beauty and the downside of economy, right? Um, when you draw it and you don't need it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but whenever you see it at setup, it's great. Um, or early on in the game, so that is a hard ratio to kind of uh, to feel out here. But if things had gone how they normally do. That economy is great for him right now. Right, he's because he's got two, two or three cards, more characters yeah. that he needs to play. So do you think that, uh, like I said, do you think this is a particularly just juicy start for you? Or is there something more going on? Is this a, a new paradigm? So you're bringing out who? The Sorrowful Man? It's a Sorrowful Man. Um, he either has to pay me a gold. Um, Kill a refugee. Wow, how, how, angry, how angry of you. I really, I did it so that I could get a character out, both shadow cards out. Um, King's Landing is the other shadow cards I brought out, so now I'm going to get a draw. Right. Uh, but I wanted that extra character. I'm going to go ahead and draw, so I, maybe I can have something to ambush in. And then I'll military, because he doesn't have any icons, and he'll definitely be losing a character here. And again, when I win the military, you can guess who's coming in. Absolutely. To trigger the minus one, and give me a stealth character that can get past that conclave. Yeah, the tide has certainly turned. Um, you think you do this consistently? I guess that's what we keep talking about. <laughs> um, you know, it, this exact setup won't happen every time. Um, I don't see Illyrio every game. I don't see Caldrogo every game. But, uh, you know, I've played this deck enough that pretty much no matter what the hand is, I can play it. Um, and it's, you know, you play a hand and one time it wins you a game and you play a different opponent and it doesn't the next time. So it's kind of learning how to play the hands against certain opponents. Whereas a lot of a lot of times I would have saved that Hatchling's Feast, but you can see using it last turn has paid off huge here. Right, right, right. It seems like the the mistake that people make with Martel Maesters, um, and Ben looks like, I mean, ultimately this is probably not the ideal draw for him. 
Um, having that first turn conclave, I would say, is having some orphans. That, like all of that is rolling really well. Uh, but given that he doesn't have the change, doesn't have the card draw, you know, drawing into more C's and maybe more gold um, is not exactly what he's looking for. But here's the thing, right? So uh, maybe the whole trick to me, one of the tricks to Macers at least, is you can't really hold on to your trump cards. You really need to use them early to keep them out of the game, you know, as, as soon as you can. Because, like you said, it is all about momentum, and I'm amazed kind of to see here what maesters look like when they don't have that momentum on their side. And it's certainly less terrifying, I will say that. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, that's the... If you can come out and stop them early game, it's a completely different beast. Um, and, and that's, you know, a lot of times I had to learn it hard, but it was like I would make unopposed challenges, and he would give them to me, but then he would get three chains off because I didn't have anything to block with. Absolutely. So it's learning, you know, you can't just take the free military challenge because you can against Maesters if it means you can block and not let him win a challenge. Absolutely. So we have the Conclave uh, swinging in here. He's at minus one strength for Caldrogo proccing that Illyrio. Looks like he's going to do a... It has to be a power challenge or intrigue challenge. There we go. Okay. Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. He remembered. Um, so he's blocking. Now, the interesting part here is another thing about this deck. I really like getting players down to one character left. So I'm going to incinerate here and name ally, and I'm going to kill his, I think it's the Acolyte. Yeah. Um, and what's crazy, because he's not going to kneel to do Intrigue, he's going to win the challenge, and I'm hoping he puts his best chains on this Conclave. Because I want him to get three chains and as many power as he wants on this character. Right. Uh, because one of the my favorite plots is March to the Wall. Um, when you're down to one character, it's a like whatever chains he puts on are going to go to the discard pile um unless of course he outwits which i'm sure he's running so i'm letting him build up uh question here too though is if he does outwit uh he's nailing his conclave for the turn absolutely so you kind of win either way there yep and so yeah outwit definitely changes the options but He's again. He's winning these unopposed challenges, not kneeling. He's going to put his best chains on, and he's almost forced into an outwit in the next turn. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And it looks like uh, you know. You remember that first link that he pulled there? Uh, uh, looks like it starts with an S, maybe. I'm pretty I don't sure it was the apprentice with. collar. Seems like it would be. That's a very bin play. Apprentice collar. For those who don't know, of course, is uh, it's all about keeping your maces from getting screwed by nightmares. Um, or blinking effects. So it gives them two instances of being a maester, and it makes them really just kind of impenetrable. That looks like the iron link there. Um, Which so, is a military one, right? Yeah, we'll see what Ben's up to here. There you go, swinging in. I'm pretty confident he... Yeah, it's power challenge. Power challenge. Unopposed. Renown. One from your house, and Renown. So uh, this, but this just goes to show he's at six power now. Yep. With one character, like one round of just like all your stuff being knelt down with one dude, yeah. And he's going to get an, like another chain. Uh, so this the the potential for this deck to explode and take that momentum back is always there and it's something to to keep in mind here. Yeah, I mean if they can get to seven, eight, nine power, they can usually win if if you can't stop them. Absolutely. And I think that's really why the Artist Seduction Open is such a standard open for this deck. Uh, so Ben takes Dominance with his gold, and we're looking at 7 power versus 3. So, I mean, you've come out strong here, but you've got to be thinking at this point, that's a lot of power he just got. It's true. Um, but, you know, I have card draw out, I have characters out, I have the Cal Drogo coming down for his low-strength characters. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to march to the wall here and force him, assuming he plays out wit, to either kneel or get rid of his character with three Spite chains. It, yeah. um, and, and, you know, in that case, you know, with the dupe on Illyrio, it, it gets even worse because next turn I can threat from the north potentially and get him down or even just Valor. Just straight up Valor, yeah, to keep it controlled. <clears throat> and hand size has been a critical factor in this game. I think the early roll by Decree has made a huge difference in the ability for Ben to kind of recover here and catch back that momentum. Even if he had kept that second Orphan of Greenblood, what the board would have looked like if he had denied you one more set of challenges. Um, that would be a very interesting uh, interesting thing to look at. So Rule by Decree, again, has proven itself to be pretty uh, pretty advantageous sure. in a lot of instances. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's pretty crazy. And Ben is really uh, thinking about this plot here, which it's a hard choice because I think at this point he knows that the Conclave is in trouble. Um, there's not really a tastier target for a March to the Wall right now. There just isn't. And you you are one of the few who actually runs that card. You're probably the only one around here who does. Um, people aren't going to be used to seeing this card. Uh, ben, however, does have the advantage of knowing <laughs> he does that, now. that it comes uh, pretty often from the Hollow Hill Zack uh, playbook. So we'll see how he reacts. I think he has to drop out Wit here. It's kind of a tense moment. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember someone saying something to him about, you know, it looks looking good or something, and uh, he just shook his head at this point because he can feel the control of the game, uh, and and you know I'm sitting here. I, I'm obviously sitting back. You can see, uh, March to the Wall is to me the obvious choice. Um, you pick him back up just to do the old second sweep, maybe make him change his mind. <laughs> well, at this point, you know, I've realized that Outwit's coming. I've played him enough times to know it's there. Um, and I'm just making sure that I'm okay with that. And I am because he's going to have to kneel his only character on the board with three chains. You know, uh, Call to Court is an interesting option as well here. I was definitely considering it. Um, he's down to one card and assuming that... But it's a win revealed. So... Uh-huh. Yeah, he does go for the outwit. Yeah, yeah. And now he's going to have to decide whether he wants to discard or kneel. Which... Well, he's certainly better kneel here if he dropped it. He certainly he knew what was coming. Yeah. And then he is going to get to hit any of his uh, win reveal, or I'm sorry, win this character kneels effects, um, which uh, apologies for not being terribly, uh, you know, 100% familiar with these chains. We'll see if uh, the board changes at all. I think it was just the military icon. Yeah, I think so too. Which, you know... Uh, if you're, you know, at a certain point, Ben's down to one character. He's making his challenges. He knows that he knows that it's going to come to this. He's going to have to outwit at that point, I imagine. So I wonder if there was any more change that would be more lucrative uh, to put on because he knows he's going to get to proc any of the when this character kneels effects. Uh, but I'm sure he also wants to stack them up for later in the game, and we'll see if that pays off. Absolutely. Now, you also have to remember here, too, um, because it's a burn deck, he's going to have to put down multiple characters for me not to be able to burn get a military through and be able to wipe his board that's anyway. a big deal right there right sir layton sir layton four cost um all i need to do is burn layton and Sirio gonna... comes out you give minus one with illyrio and you get to draw a card with king's landing Sirio the boomerang how's he uh can't say enough good things about hmm. Sirio, right in a game where i see illyrio Sirio, and cal Drogo, it's it's pretty good now, right. actually, here's um, two play mistakes that we realized after the game, but I don't think it ended up mattering so much because I had a stealth military character. But um, Sir Layton has no attachments. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh, so I couldn't have burned there. Now, I did have an incinerate with the influence to burn him all the way. No attachments, no minus one, no anything. Um, so that ultimately uh, would do the job regardless. You guys kind of agreed after the fact that... That's the kind of thing, this happens all the time in Game of Thrones. Uh, there's, there's so much subtlety, there's so many keywords to pay attention to, effects that are happening on the board. It kind of goes back to the etiquette podcast that we did a while back, um, and just both people having to pay attention to what's going on. In this case, you know, neither of you really knew what was happening. Um, ben didn't call you on it because he didn't know it was no attachments either. Um, you obviously weren't doing it in a malicious way, it was just uh, the way that that goes. And I'd be willing to wager that you know pretty much every game has some kind of uh, contem- uh, some kind of complication like that. So Ben responds with a parting blow. This is going to kneel uh, Illyrio, and it's also going to let him draw a card, which is much needed right now. He's really wanting those cards. And at this point, you've got the military challenge, which is a bit of a disaster for that conclave. And you also have stealth for any kind of shenanigans that are going on. And there seems to be a lot of uh, contemplation going on here. Um, all right, so just the Dragon Thief, huh? Yeah, I was considering whether to put... It was for the Intrigue For challenge. the Intrigue first, right? Yeah. Um, and then after I win the challenge, obviously, I don't think I do, but I could have put in Cal Drogo. So all military, clear his board. Yeah, that's a big deal right there. And I think I, I forget to put Sirio back into Shadows, which is when I get excited, happens. Yeah. Here comes Cal... Um, I'll get the power challenge, and then I'll be able to leave my Sorrowful Man standing for dominance. Um, put Cal back in. 
Looks like we got, what, two gold versus your one plus Sorrowful Man? Yeah. So, yeah, this is a big swing. Now, at this point, you've got to be thinking Valor, right? His Valor? Yeah, his Valor. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. So what do you do here to make sure... I mean, it's still... It's, a, it's, a, it's not a solid play, right? So you've got more cards. You've got a dupe out. My anti-Valor um, is called the Court. Which so here you go. Any Call valors, the Because I forgot to put him back under. I should have totally put him back under. So you have to put... I see. So you have to put Illyrio back in to save him. Syria. Or Syria back in. Right? Mm -hmm. Which I'm, I'm fine doing. Um, it, definitely a play mistake. Uh, I put him under. I could have saved the ambush character. Right. And been miles ahead. Syria is just clutch with that King's Landing, though. That's how you're going to get your money's worth out of that location. So Call the Core allows you to put a three-cost character into play, and then you can pull a character out of play. You must pull a character out of play. Um, so that's what you did to save Sirio. Uh, you pulled him out, and now you drop Illyrio, Shadow Parasite, and Killer of the Wounded. Uh, the two new characters, just most people being complete trash, right? I mean, this is just, <laughs> this is the scrappiest of all time yeah, I mean, characters. You've got a zero cost that gets plus one strength anytime strength is reduced, plus X strength, where X is the amount reduced. Um, so he oh. is Valor, he decides not to play characters. He Have probably didn't have, yeah, who knows. I put Sirio out, having any character here. Or, uh, it doesn't really matter, right? You're just yeah. going to stealth through with Sirio, Color of the Wounded, and uh, gets difficult. He calls it thinking. That's always good to get out of there. Yeah. I'll go ahead and swing for my power. Power challenge comes through. And at this point, you seem to be gaining all the traction here. Yeah. I mean, he valored, so he has no claim. He knows that, again, against Burn, you know, I can kill one or two characters a turn. So you've got to put out more than that to even have something left standing. And I think here he's saving up his economy and is, is, he's hoping to get through this turn so that he can play a bunch of stuff on the next turn. Right. He's got to get a lot of stuff out and I don't know what he drops here to make that happen um, so what are you thinking at the plot right now so you're trying to take this thing home um, I assume you're wanting some high initiative or maybe even you know a threat from the north or something that is going to potentially hurt his ability to stay on the board I'm pretty sure I do City of Shadows I may do um, the city plot that is two claim even though I haven't City of Shadows which I do um, because I want the two claim uh, I have Cal Drogo to drop I have Sirio so if he plays characters, I can get a military off very well. Um, I have initiative. He only has one initiative. He's going to get a maester. Uh, right. But I'm going to have two claim, and I've got burn burn effects in hand. Um, I was just after the claim. Yeah, you're just looking to, to close this one out. So you're going to go first here. Um, his maester comes out, and we're going to see how this is going to go for you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I bring Syria out during um, either draw or marshalling so that I can trigger King's Landing again and actually... There it is. That's the slingshot that uh, we love. Bring him out at the start of draw, and then you kneel to draw again. And I have another card in Shadows that I'll probably potentially bring out in Marshalling. We'll see. I mean, in uh, challenges. challenges. Yeah. Yeah, so the hand is robust. This is uh, this is just kind of a... This is the last thing that Ben wants to see. I mean, it's it's been bad, but this is now where things feel a little bit... So speaking of momentum, I guess you could yeah, say. Yeah, and then to make things worse, I played the, uh, the sort of the the, only, the card I play in the last turn of the game usually, if I have it, which is Rainy's Hill. Rainy's Hill. Um, so all those characters that I've killed, if I want started challenges, I can play them all. The Conclave, you name them all. And the crazy part about Rainy's Hill is that I have Illyrio out. So every one of those characters that enters play, I can do minus one strength, dead of zero. Um, that is just a nasty board clear right there. Yeah, it's, it's the kind of thing that can Valor. come back and bite you in the butt. Um, no, but seriously, it's uh, pretty crazy. So if I... <laughs> There's all that economy. Again, I have two claim, though. So I don't need to use Rainy's Hill. I'm going to trigger the minus one on the Acolyte. Uh, and then Just I'll... Just playing it safe. Yeah, and then I'll stealth military and clear his board. Three unopposed, and this should be game unless he has something in his hand. You know, they say the, uh, the, the level of going from a good player to a great player is... Uh, even whenever you're ahead and when you're winning and everything looks great, always planning for the worst. Always planning for that contin that one contingency that's going to drop the game on its head. And uh, I think holding onto the hill there and not just going crazy when you don't need it um, is one of those types of things where next, you know, so the unexplainable happens. Next turn, you have a trump card uh, that can actually get you even out of trouble. Right there with two claim, I go ahead and incinerate his champion just in case he can boost strength. And, and that's it. 
So there you have it, Zach. Uh, nice performance with the burn deck. Again, this is uh, this is not the usual from what uh, we've seen, but uh, looks like just there's some different plays going on here. I'm approaching the maesters in a different way, and uh, now I'm sure when Ben plays you again, he'll approach you in a different way. And, Hopefully that's the case, yeah. But yeah. it really just comes down to shutting him down early and making sure those chains don't come off. Right. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. This has been uh, one of the f games from the first round of our Top 8 event at the Covenant Store. Um, it was a, an awesome event, awesome day, and we'll keep games coming from that event. And keep in uh, touch with us. Keep watching because we will be posting coverage from Worlds, uh, interviews, games, and uh, hopefully you'll see uh, another uh, nice little Red Phoenix shirt there in the top table. That's the goal. <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys, and uh, take care.